Round nine of the Lewis Hamilton career mode on F124 brings us to the Canadian Grand Prix. Now, before we jump into the weekend, guys, we have a secret meeting. Secret meeting number two with Ferrari. Now, before we get into that, I want to quickly plug the previous episode, guys, from yesterday at Monaco. If you haven't seen it, spoiler warning ahead. Check it out. Link in the top right. Now, before we jump into the meeting, I want to note last time we got caught out. Mercedes found out that we met with Ferrari and we got hit with a pretty hefty hit on the recognition dropping from 54 to 52 and we still haven't recovered. So with that in mind, if we get found out again, we will drop to 50-50 status with George Russell and then it might be tricky for us to kind of reassert ourselves over him as the number one driver in the team. So this is risky, but for the sake of, you know, realism and making the career mode happen, we are going to go ahead and meet with them. And this time, there's three team members also showcasing their development as a team and what they've been working on, essentially showing us their books and, you know, what their car looks like at this stage. Now, we are actually better in performance and development, but that's not what we really care about. You know, like Hamilton in real life, we want to drive in red that is what it's all about at this stage in his career you know approaching 40 not many years left you want to make sure you tick that ferrari box off your bucket list so there is a very slight decrease in level going to ferrari but we're talking very very minor i mean it's basically almost a sideways step because you know they're still a great team and also we don't know how the second half of the season will develop so i went ahead and actually continued the talks with ferrari been scouring the socials and asking around, and I'm delighted to say that the team are none the wiser about us chatting with anyone else. And the meeting went well, too. I know, I know. I'm amazing. <laughs> You're welcome. Luckily, Mercedes haven't found out, so this time we will keep our recognition intact. Now, following on from the last episode, we picked up a hell of a lot of, you know, driver stats, upgrades, and we really are looking in decent shape heading into the halfway stage of the season. You can see there we maintain our 52 recognition status and after the last race we also ranked up quite nicely on the specialists and you know all the perks that they offer us so speaking of which for this weekend we are going to also select our new specialists and perks for the canadian grand prix looking to try and of course always improve all departments of the team and the car and the drivers so with that done, we've selected our aero goal, we've now done our engine goal, and we're now going to our quality or durability goal, and we're going to complete one session without using a flashback, which will most likely be qualifying. And then we have, of course, the final one, which is going to be the strategy, which overall should be fine. We're going to go for complete one practice program during a weekend, which isn't really that complex. I mean, that's about as easy as it gets, to be honest with you. So uh, we'll take that and move on as we get into upgrades. Now, We've been slowing down a little bit as upgrades are starting to get a bit more expensive at this stage, but we still have a few available. And I'm going to go for the ERS status, which are going to improve the battery. Um, George has his eyes set on durability. So at the minute, you can see we have the best power unit in the field, and that will arrive for Spain the next race. So we spend our points, and that is going to be it for us as we sim ahead to the race. You can see here we're also gathering R&D points as we go through the weeks and days and we arrive at Canada a track which of course Lewis Hamilton absolutely loves and you know had his first win around here in 2007 you can see the forecast we have rain a hell of a lot of it for the race qualifying though is dry interesting very interesting also we get confirmation of a fuel efficiency upgrade arriving onto the car this weekend so yet again we continue the trend we've brought upgrades to every single race in this career mode so far and that trend is still continuing here today so very happy with that making good progress and we can now jump into practice now before we get on track i want to show off the setup i was running around here this weekend so i'm not using src when i'm not using it i will show you know the setup and what i'm kind of working with now i was going to run a more top speed preset but because of the rain in the race i'm going to tailor my setup more for that race so we're going to actually build off the balanced preset and then kind of move on from there so 
a bit more higher on the wing and then making some adjustments to engine braking you know also transmission suspension geometry all that sort of stuff just trying to get the ride height a bit lower as well and then of course the brake bias and tire pressure is all about just trying to find that compromise and get the car fine-tuned for the race which is what we really care about in those wet conditions so in the end i found something that i was kind of happy with i still kind of you know made small tweaks here and there but generally uh, that was the baseline that i started off with and we now jump into on-track action in practice. So starting off with, of course, FP1, uh, looking to try and get those programs done. We simmed a few programs and now we're currently... Program complete and a job well done. We got some excellent data with that run, so come on back to the garage and I can take you through the numbers. And we are currently in FP2 and we've got our race runs done. So you can see tire wear absolutely excellent for us in that really, really encouraging. And then about average... Uh, race fuel burn so yeah you can see our second lap was a little bit off track but the rest of them super consistent around a one minute 10.2 so very very good pace and very consistent pace you can see here uh, purple last sector as well so kind of showing that we do have a decent package underneath us anyway after practice we picked up 300 R&D points as we maxed out all of our points objectives for all of practice so we had a very good session and that is going to also increase our experience stat a little bit as we get ready to move into qualifying but before that we are going to quickly delve into the menu and change some engine components because we are dealing with a little bit of wear on the power unit now we got through practice on that second hand power unit but we're now going to switch out and make some updates starting off with the ng uk also the energy store and then the turbocharger and then of course the gearbox the control electronics are kept the same because we have a bit less wear than the energy store it is time to go qualifying in canada a historic track looks simple it's anything but welcome to montreal Right then, here we go. Soft tires on the car. Now we're getting into serious business and serious lap times. Our first lap didn't go according to plan. I got a bit deep, ran wide and missed the apex and invalidated through there. So we tried again, very next lap. I was actually marginally quicker and this time we keep it on the track and within the track limits as well. So much better this time as we cross a second sector split, two tenths up on Nico Hulkenberg in 16th, which isn't a lot, two tenths, but We'll see what happens. We saw in practice sector three was my best sector, so maybe we can make up some, you know, some ground and some head headway in this kind of back straight onto the chicane. Which, speaking of which, is extremely challenging. The visibility is really poor on the shadows. You just can't really tell where to turn in or where the breaking point is. But we do get it right, cross the line and go P4 purple in sector three according to the mini map. So we'll take that and we go. Back to the garage, we make some further car adjustments. I'm going to crank up the front wing by an extra click to eliminate some of the understeer, which I still felt we had in the car, and we finish in P11. Verstappen setting the pace at 1 minute 8.4. Uh, Russell P3 looking pretty decent pace-wise as we jump into Q2. Fresh tires on our car once again, and again, using those setup tweaks to try and find a bit more lap time in this session. So we know we've got that kind of baseline from Q1, that baseline pace marker. So that's going to be the kind of time we want to aim and beat. So currently through sector one, again, purple according to the mini map. Not a ton of times, I believe at the moment. Times are kind of coming in as we speak. We've got a bit of traffic up ahead, so we'll see if they get involved or not. We've had a bit of a, a mixed track record this game so far with traffic in qualifying laps. Either way, uh, we get through the chicane pretty nicely hitting our marks and now down to the hairpin braking at I'd say about 100 meters down to second gear bit of a lock up on the way in but we get decent rotation which is what matters and carry good speed through the hairpin and now we open the DRS down the back straight and we are catching this slow car pretty rapidly who now moves out of the way it's sergeant and we just have to lift a little bit as luckily he pits but it did cost us time running up to the line though we set a 18.6 and go straight into first, which tells me the pace is a bit slower in Q2 compared to Q1 because Verstappen did a 0.4 in the first part of qualifying. But 
I reckon that will probably be good enough to get into Q3. So we did not go back out. And surprisingly, there wasn't a lot of improvement. And also, there were some big scalps. Stroll, Alonso, Russell, Piastri. Big, big names out in Q2. Both kick salvers get through into Q3, along with Albon and Gasly. So some surprises in that one for sure. Red Bull, though, and Ferrari get both of their cars into Q3. And uh, speaking of which, here we are then on track now with, of course, our penultimate set of fresh tyres. These are the ones that are, you know, obliged as a Q3 allocation of tyres. So we have our spare set remaining if we need it. Currently, looking to close out the lap through the frontal chicane, through the wall of champions. We get very close there, brushing it on the exit. And across the line we go, and we set a 1 minute 8.3. So we go three tenths quicker than Q2, but still three tenths off Checo Perez, who's done a 0, which is massively quick around here, way quicker than anything we've seen so far this weekend. So big pressure to deliver on this very final lap. P3, Sergio Perez on pole for the Canadian Grand Prix. Verstappen makes it a Red Bull front row lockout. And to be fair, we stay in third. We did improve, but no change to our final position. We outqualify Leclerc, of course, our rival, and that is what matters. So job done for us. I don't mind that. We had a bit of a scruffy final lap. We found a chunk of time in the last sector, but it wasn't enough to move anywhere. So job done in qualifying. And you can see here, we're currently drawing as Leclerc is actually ranked up to level 90 in the driver rivalry so um interesting game on leclerc fighting back and not giving up without a fight either way we pick up some decent stats and that is qualifying done so we are now ready for the race the main event and of course the weather forecast which promises rain we're back once again beside the st lawrence river here in montreal for the canadian grand prix the event first moved to a variant of this track back in 1978. It was won by none other than Gilles Villeneuve, the first Canadian to ever win his home race and in whose honour the circuit would be renamed. It is a 2.7 mile circuit. There's a top speed of just under 200 miles per hour. We have the DRS zones, 14 turns, tight corners, a narrow track, a knowledgeable, enthusiastic fan base and one of the best stops on the Formula One calendar. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. It's Sergio Perez on pole today, edging out Max Verstappen, who will start from P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Hamilton, Sainz, Leclerc, Bottas, Norris, Gasly, Stroll, Russell, Fernando Alonso, Oscar Piastri, Sargent, Sonoda, Magnussen, Joe, Ocon, Ricardo, Albert, and Nico Hulkenberg rounds off the grid. Now it lights out just moments away. It's time to go down to the track. Welcome to the commentary box. 
overlooking the circuit. I'm Alex Jakes, and joining us for the race today is Naomi Schiff. Or well, Sergio Perez on screen there. Well, it's all about forgetting last time because that was a bit of a shocker. How do they change the story today? It is true they had a really tough day in the office last time out, but they cannot dwell on that. It's so important to turn the page and start on a blank slate because the more you dwell on that, the less it's going to push you in the right direction. So take some notes. Obviously, there's things to be learned, but move on. Race time at Canada, and it's absolutely chucking it down to the point where we are starting on the full wet. Red Bull front row lockout. They bounce back this weekend looking very strong. So we'll see what happens. We are starting P3. Of course, George Russell outside the top 10. I'm running one lap under on fuel. I don't want to go too aggressive uh, with the underfueling, but we should be able to hopefully save that fuel in these conditions pretty easily now Perez on pole not Verstappen we'll see what the case is getting to the first corner I believe this is my first wet race start on this game so we'll see what happens that could be interesting either way let's make it a good one I'm optimistic should be a good track for us of course we made our setup tailored for these conditions so hopefully we find that benefit and we're fast either way let's try and win another race and make it a three on the bounce I've also realized higher temperatures are extremely cold in the wet. 23 Celsius we started out with, but now just about hitting 30. But what a difference in tire temp compared to the dry when you're running in the hundreds. Literally insane. Trying to figure out what the best way is to warm the tires up. This seems to be the most effective way. Just sharp, quick movements. But still struggling to get any decent temperature as the Red Bulls choose to go side by side on the uh, formation lap here on the run to the grid. That's about it in terms of temperature. We're not going to get any more as we're <laughs> going very slowly. So um, let's see what happens. Either way, I'm looking forward to this one. A bit of wet. We always like a bit of that. Let's get into it. So, missed our grid box. Not ideal. Anyway, lights on. And away we go. Oh, yes. Look at that. Of what a start straight up the inside and we clear both Red Bulls instantly Perez though back around the outside hello struggling to get the traction down tires are really cold we're going to hold the inside though into the chicane and muscle away in front of Perez what a brilliant start that was absolutely perfect traction off the line I'm just going to move my brake bias a bit to the front here once I get on the straight. As I can feel I can't really brake much, otherwise we're going to re-lock. We'll go 55 for now. Perez lurking, but doesn't pull to the side to make a move. So we'll stay in front. Okay, good stuff. Traction looks pretty healthy right now. Let's get the car stopped for the hairpin. No idea where I'm braking in these conditions. Traction absolutely critical here, and we deliver. Now we get on the battery for the first time. I think our straight line speed will be quite low. We are running very high wing, and Perez tried to go through there, but I got a bit out of shape. I might have moved a bit late, but we'll take it. And we retain first place. I was trying to cover off the inside there from Perez, who is back for more into turn one. We're just going to hold the inside. Right, I think now we've got a bit of tire temperature. Yes, we have, we're in the 40s, so now we can start to hopefully put some pace into this and start to open up a gap if possible. Okay, now we're just starting to build a gap here. We go purple. Okay, no issues with tire wear for now. Keep taking care of them. No more having to defend the inside line into turn one. I've already checked my rears, and we're kind of chewing through them already. I'm trying to be very careful, but Clearly, they're just getting used up a lot around here. I am a little bit concerned that we are burning fuel. We're not saving anything, so that's a bit of an issue. There should be a few stops in this race to help us pull it back, but we are going to be marginal on fuel. The calculation wasn't fully correct. The tyre situation is an interesting one, but I think the right call is to stick with what we've got for now. Yeah, it still seems heavy rain. I don't think it's intermediates yet. And suddenly, we're into light rain conditions. 
like the best tire for now. Okay, Lewis, we're not using as much fuel as we need to, so let's burn through some more now so that we're not too heavy at the end of the race. I'm going to box. Okay, we can take you this lap. It's intermediate. Right, we'll box. I think that objective should be pretty easy. We've got intermediates ready to go. So we're not going to speed too much. We'll save some fuel. And there we go, straight into the pits. I think we are the only car in. So we'll see if this works out. I'm pretty sure it will, knowing how they are behaving in this game with the wet conditions. 2.5, standard stop, we'll take that. And we'll see what these inters feel like. We'll be at the back of the queue, at the back of the train. And we'll try and make this tire work. Hopefully, we can also save some fuel with this. Okay, stay clear of the white line on the exit. We'll receive a penalty for dangerous driving if you cross onto the track. Right then, back on the way, right on the back of the train. Let's see the pace difference, even now through this first chicane. So gap 2.7 to Albon. Let's see, I can already feel there's plenty of grip on these. Got to be careful on the eggs, have a look at the gap. Already three tenths quicker, we're flat through there as well. Okay, Perez, 22.6, goes purple, and crucially, the AI all staying out. I'm not sure if we're going to hit this fuel burn target. It seems quite aggressive, and I'm trying to save fuel, not burn it. But we're going to start passing traffic now as well, so we're not going to save. Purple, sector three as well, as now we begin. You can see we're visibly a lot quicker. Let's see if we can try, maybe have a look here. Hmm, I think we are, we're a bit far back, Perez going quicker. We might actually just hit this fuel target. Through the chicane we go. I'm going to set Alex up for the exit and the line. We're just going to fall short on the fuel target. Okay, unlucky mate. That wasn't quite what we needed, but let's not worry about it. Get your head down and chin up. There's a long way to go. So, purple, even in traffic. This is the right strap. Hulkenberg. Is the next station, and then Ricardo shortly after that. Here we go. Bit of contact there. Holkenberg try to cover off the inside in the braking zone, but we go through. No tire concerns at the moment. Just focus on the driving. So no damage. Look at the grip through there compared to Ricardo. We're saving fuel now as well, which is really good. Up the inside, just letting go of the brake and letting the downfall through the work. Oof. Into the 121s, that's half a second quicker than anything else. We're just getting faster right now. Arcon, next up. Tire condition still looking good. And we're going through the rears again, but not as badly as the first in. Look at the grip compared to Ocon. Oh, I had to get out of there. I was going to lose momentum. Same move as Hulkenberg up the inside. I wonder if the AI are going to try and go straight to drives. They did it in the very first video and race I did in this game around Spa. They did the reverse. They went from dry tyres straight onto wet. They kind of skipped the intermediate. So we'll just see if that's what they're going to try and do. That's my theory. Either way, we've got until dry tire to basically make some moves here. So Joe next. On the outside. We might have a look at Magnuson. Not quite. Almost went around the outside. I tried to sneak through. We'll get him here though. Just gotta set the chicane up nice and tidy. We are just getting faster and faster now. The grip difference is Undeniable, we're going to just get on the inside there to force that move straight on to overtake to the inside. Let's not run into the back of Sergeant and we'll hopefully get a logo now of the final chicane here. Just got to get close. Red Bull in the pits. Here we go. This is interesting. So, one of them pulling the trigger, we'll see what tire they go for. Had a look. We get a warning, but we'll take it. Straight through. Come on. 23 laps of fuel remaining. Purple. Didn't even catch what Tyler Red Bull was on there, so 
I guess we'll never know. Ten minutes left of this rain, then we think it's gonna dry up. Ten minutes. Inter seem to be the fastest tyre for now. It's only Red Bull pitting. Now Checo's in the pits, and we'll get to see the tyres this time. Okay, it's Verstappen. Look at that, 120.3. So Red Bull have realised and woken up, and they've put the Inters on, but they are the only team to do so. Which is great. We've now jumped both Red Bulls, who are the two cars ahead of us in this race. Okay, you're doing well out there. Keep it up. We're looking at about 10 more minutes of rain. 10 minutes. So these guys are probably going to go straight to dryers. That's my prediction. And I reckon it will come true. So Ferrari 1-2 right now. Our rival Leclerc, crucially, up there as we just give Alonso a squeeze. Russell going for a move up ahead, or was trying to, on Pierre Gasly. No one is pitting. Only Red Bull have answered the call. Here we go. Home hero, Lance Stroll. Up the inside, nice and easy. And now we have George, our teammate. Every lap the track is just getting quicker for us. This is the right tyre to be on. Oh, we're trying around the outside there, but George having none of it. Over the kerbs nice and aggressively there. To try and set up the counter line. Russell tries to defend and does. Aggressive defending as we lock up all the way into that corner, but we go through on our teammate. And we're now into the top six. Pierre Gasly next up. I'm going to try and get him now before the chicane. Here we go, straight through. Momentum on our side. And just like that, we're now P5. There are 20 laps of fuel left. Okay, Lewis, we've got loads of ERS in reserve, so let's have a big push and use it all up. Yep, I'll sort that out for you right now. Closing in now on Norris and Bottas having a very good race in the Sauber up in P3. Impressive from him. Stuff, mate. You hit the target well there. Nice one. There's a long way to go in this race though, so keep your head down. Okay, George is coming in for his stop. Interesting. So Russell Pitts, surely not another set of wets. They'll go into Inters, right? Logically. Around the outside of Norris, or trying to anyway, but struggling to find the grip. Around the outside we go, and this time we'll go through, unlike with George. Bottas next, you see them struggling for grip so much. We go straight up the inside and take no prisoners, using the grip now to our advantage. Oh, Ferrari double stack. What is going on? And that's going to ruin the Leclerc's race, and now Bottas and Norris also pit, so that gives us P1. Right, so... Everyone will now be on Inters, but they're about 10 laps too late. We're approaching the pit window, and you're going to be on mediums. Hmm. Those rears, not looking too great. I mean, the tyre wear kind of confirms it. You can see we've completely knackered our rear tyres, so we're just going to try and lean on the fronts a bit. Put the brake bars forward and see if we can counteract it a bit. Try and look for the water, this new feature in the game, to see if we can cool off the tyres a little bit. Let's see if it works. That seems to be working. Driving on the wet patches. We're getting some better tyre temperatures. So that's encouraging. That's good to see. The tyres are getting hot again, which means the track's starting to dry. I can't keep them cool. We're driving okay. I'm just being very smooth to not overdrive. But even driving on the wet stuff now isn't really helping. We'll see if these guys... I'll go one more lap just to be safe. I don't want to pull the trigger too early. But I reckon either this up or next one could be dries. We'll go for one more. They're staying out as well. Yep, personal best middle sector. I think it's maybe the right time to switch. We'll go for mediums. There is spray. Confirmed. We'll receive you at the end of this lap. But it's generally offline. Also, fuel is still a bit marginal. Mediums ready to go. That's not speed. Nice and easy into the pits. Right. Brake bars adjustment. We'll go 55 for now. Let's see if this works. 2.5. Another regular on the money stop. If I can get out ahead of Gasly here, that would be huge. I don't think we will, though. Bottas goes quickest. We're going to be right behind this train of cars. That was our last 
Not optimal. Can we get in the middle of it? Oof, hang about. I might have gone a bit too early yet. Right, Red Bull in the pits. So, I wasn't a million miles off, but I have lost time. I'm going to get the battery on here to not let Stroll pass in case he goes straight into the pits. Yep, AI pitting. This is probably it. We get a second warning. That's the first time I felt some grip on the front. They're going for hards, interestingly. So we'll have better grip. The track now in the last sector has started to just turn a little bit. And that feels a bit better. Okay, Lewis, let's try and pick our moments when we use ERS. Let's try to be consistent with it going forward, please. Mm-hmm. Sure thing. We are going to get DRS on Norris here if it gets enabled in time. I don't think it will, though. Oh, there we go. A little bit of DRS. Right, easy does it. Let's not overcommit on the grip. And there we go. Back into P1 with a purple lap. Right, let's see if we can manage now for the last 10 laps. Hopefully this is the right tyre choice. That's a better lap, but we're burning fuel again. So we need to manage. We don't have a lot in the reserve. This is going to be really interesting, really close as well. Verstappen overtakes Perez. Luckily, they've lost a chunk of time. I think going side by side for the final chicane. So that's going to give us a little bit of respite. And Sainz is going to get in the battle as well. <sighs> Taking a bit of risk now through there. Every single lap. Has to be done though. We're not super quick. So we're having to stay on the pace here. Just trying to keep Verstappen out of DRS for as long as possible. This is the detection point right here. Now, where those marshals are on the right-hand side. Just need to try and hold them out for two more laps. But they're closing and I don't really have an answer. Uh oh, here we go. This is getting close. Front right lock up into there. Not ideal. Using battery on the way out, but I couldn't stop it. Verstappen's got DRS. Oh boy, here we go. This is going to get very interesting. Doesn't help that AI very good through the hairpin as well. Verstappen's within range. I think the smart money is actually to let him go here. I've got an idea. We're going to bank on the AI and their lack of battery on the last lap to try and get this one back. But we need to fight and stick with the pace. First happens our battery. I think we've got this perfect. Just got to try and stay close. By the time we get to the back straight, you can see visibly on the acceleration we're catching. Easy look at this. We've got the battery. Just need a nice tidy exit out of here. We'll get double DRS. What's happened? Using everything he's got left in the chamber. He's actually saved a bit and caught me off guard. What's happened? That's got enough battery. We're going to launch it. And try it on the run to the line. Oh my god, yes. Still got it. takes the checkered flag. Wow, that's three wins in a row. They really are on a roll now and really building great momentum. They're clearly one to look out for. After an excellent performance at the Grand Prix, I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team, and they certainly deserve it.
What a victory that is around Canada, snatching the win from Verstappen on the line. We managed that really well. I didn't really have the pace in the dry. I think I should have gone for hards you know, when we swapped for dry tyres, but I thought we'd be okay. But it caught up to me really quickly in the end, and we really struggled in those last few laps. And those hard tyres must have had no tyre wear whatsoever because Verstappen doing a 1 minute 9.7 is insane. Anyway, well managed. Russell only gets a point. Alonso out the points. Piastri out the points. Um, Leclerc only P8. So quite a lot to digest in that one. But let's look at the uh, standings after that race. And you can see we're now just seven points behind Verstappen. We are on a three race win streak as we get closer and closer to that level 91 overall. Russell drops from P4 to P7 in a race after dropping points here today. And then in the constructors, Red Bull with a 1-3 or 2-3 finish do still gain a few points over us and the gap is 21 but crucially we pull away from Ferrari and the gap is now 79 points so overall a good day in the office we'll take that has score their first points of the season so v Carp still pointless in this career mode and uh, yeah guys that's going to be it for me here today as always hopefully you enjoyed it also on screen you're going to have the post race driver stats and also the rivalry status the recognition and you know all that good stuff hopefully we're getting closer now to level 91 to try and secure our season goal and hopefully improve our chances with ferrari but yeah guys cheers for watching like subscribe a big shout out to the members check the links down below guys for channel sponsors and discounts also the video is on screen for more f124 content and yeah cheers for watching i'll see you soon take care and let's goodbye from me